um, let's pick uh, the word lockdown. Well, the lockdown uh, subset here uh, has about uh, 5,000 active uh, words within the first three layers of support, the, the 5,000 aspect uh, attribute pairs or sets, uh, because the attributes can actually be phrases. But in any event, uh, those 5,000 are distilled out of on the order of maybe 20 million. And so they would have had to, if someone were to try and deliberately skew our results, they would have had to have uh, polluted, so to speak, perhaps uh, 5 million uh, websites. And if you're going to pollute 5 million websites, you're going to make mistakes and reveal the fact that you're doing so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, wow. Okay. That's cool. That's good to know. Uh, it, it really is. Um, because there's a, there's, there is so much stuff going on that that people are really trying just to figure out what is being said that that is more true. Right, and it, and it makes sense, and it's a legitimate question, yeah. and and I get it frequently. And basically, because uh, people hear that we go out and read lots of words on the internet, they think we're picking up the phrase, you know, um, I see a lockdown in the banking system coming, and and maybe we are, but I'll never know it because we're not. I'm not ever going to see the words at that level. Gotcha. I gotcha, I gotcha, gotcha. We have about five minutes before we have to go for our long break, Cliff. Um, I, I know you had some notes. Is there anything in your notes that you would like to take the next four or five minutes and chat about before we take the long break? Um, or did you want to just jump back into the report and then move forward from where we well, were Well, do at? you have another question you want to hit first? Well, okay. most of them, well, yeah, there was another person that had asked about the uh, global coastal phenomenon, whether that was still on, um, if that was still happening. Um, and this guy, his name is Harry, and Harry is actually listening to us tonight from Holland. Well, uh, you know, unfortunately for Harry and everybody in the Low Country, it is indeed occurring right at this moment. Uh, it's actually being discussed, although we're not we're seeing the language appear, but it's actually curiously not um, focusing on the oceans per se, but what's going on underneath them. So the language currently that's starting to fill out the bulk of the global coastal phenomena relates to the large earthquakes in Sumatra. Uh, off the coast of Tonga, Indonesia, etc. And the uh, potential uh, for the global coastal event to take the next step up will occur in the Pacific there. But it doesn't mean that, that someone in a low country, you know, below sea level, shouldn't be concerned. Because the, the issue for us is that we actually think that the Australian Indo uh, European or Indo Australian plate, which cracked, is putting pressure on the Pacific plate. We may get another crack there. And that'll affect the coast in a serious way. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting because I had some I had some visions of um, Australia, which I I never have, and they just happened within the last week or so. So it's kind of interesting that you would bring that up. Kind of a lot of some of the stuff that I've seen before. Um, you and I have actually talked about it on the show with with what comes out in your reports. So I find it really fascinating. Um, well, it actually should work that way. I think you know just the way that. It's, it's curious but also comforting to a certain extent that our frequent uh, pick on dates, I've got astrologers that will say, oh, oh, look, it's a hot date because of, you know, Mars is, you know, whizzing around your Neptune or something. <laughs> and it's like, okay, it. okay, good, good, this is good, I guess, you know. But it, like I say, it's comforting because, of course, universe should be holistic and structured like that. And that if our stuff has any validity, then we should find validity in other formats. Agreed. Including, you know, dream visions, etc. Yeah, and I, I, I'm telling you, I still have, I still have uh, a couple of the visions uh, that I had been given a while back that they, when a vision has come to pass or it, it, it's not going to come to pass because we've, you know, changed events or whatever, they go away and I don't see them anymore. I don't even have them, I don't even recall them as a memory unless somebody brings them up and, and, and talks to me about them again. But I still have two visions that have not left me, and it's the one with the underground subs in which there's transporting something from an underground sub, and the other is the um, eruptions in the ocean from the ocean floor. You know, just we talked about that. I'm not sure if it was the last time you were on right, or the time right. before last. but I think it was time before last, yeah. but we need to revisit that as well, yeah, especially in light of this. 
well, why don't we have a coffee break here, and I'll go down <laughs> and get my coffee uh, uh. heated up here, and then when we come back, we can pick up there. Well, and I have to let everyone know that um, Cliff is, is also having a, a fantastic, wonderful coffee that um, from all these miles that I can smell it, all these miles, it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. But you know, of course, up here in the Northwest, of Hawaii, I mean, they teach coffee roasting in kin- kindergarten. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, lucky you, lucky you. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I think it will be a good time for us to go ahead and take a break. For the rest of you, please do not go away. We will be back after this long break. It's about five minutes at the top of the hour with more of Cliff High right here on Journeys with Rebecca. Hey everyone, welcome back, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Let's check to see if Cliff made it back. Cliff, are you there? I sure am, and my I've got hot coffee, so I'm good to go. Oh, <laughs> you got that good stuff that you roast yourself. I I, I can right. smell it here in Kansas City. That's great. Um, okay, so uh, wow, I'm going to tell you what that first hour just went by, boom, 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 fast, just really, really fast. Um, and there was a ton and a wealth of information in there as well. Um, so, again, um, where would you like for us to pick up from this clip? Would you like? Well, us let's to... let's go back to the the Earth changes kind of stuff, okay. the whole global coastal phenomena. The phenomena is going to be many different phenomena. Uh, we've started to see some of them with the weird blob of uh, strange gooey stuff off Alaska that was you know twelve or thirty miles long. We've had all different kinds of things occur along the uh, coast of the or west coast of the U.S. Curiously, we've had one of the larger uh, salmon runs in 20 years uh, for coho salmon in some of our rivers here uh, because everything was just perfect for them. And they, one of the things that the local biologists, I used to work for the uh, wildlife uh, department here as uh, doing technical sports, so I know all these biologists, fellows who chat with me. And one of the things they were saying was that ocean temperature or temperatures and food supply were just great for the salmon and are also great for crab. Well, but they're not so great for the other species because apparently what's going on is the food supplies are so plentiful for the salmon and the crab because other species are dying off. And and thus there's a lot of um, uh, predation and scavenging going on. In any event, though, we'd had for a number of years had uh, the idea of new lands arising. Uh, and we'd had a spot picked out which was uh, 90 east in the... Uh, 30 degrees south, which is actually sort of south of India. And one of the postulates within our work that developed over the first few years was that the longer we see an item in the data ahead of its actual materialization, the larger impact it'll have on the uh, language that is expressed at the time, or basically uh, how much a larger, uh, it would have a larger emotional impact on the people around at the time that it materializes. So if we see something six months out, it might be a big deal, but something a year and a half out is a whole lot bigger deal. And we've seen this idea of new lands arising since about 2002. And one of the things that we had was this spot um, 30 uh, south, 90 east, which, of course, now turns out, uh, as we've discovered, to be the uh, southern terminus of the crack that formed in what had been the austro uh, Indian uh, plate or Indo-Australian plate which was this large tectonic mass that more or less connected um, India and Australia. I don't really buy the idea that these things are solid chunks of rock the way we think of them because at that level they're really just uh, aggregations of giant boulders upon which the continents sit. But nonetheless we can think of them as, as basically a, a plate that cracked with the tsunami and its termination point is down at 90 east which is um, uh, curious because that's where we had seen a very large land mass that was going to eventually start popping up there. And that was just going to be one of several spots. The other spot that we had identified was in the uh, northern area of uh, French Polynesia, which, of course, is off on the side of Tonga et al., where all of the earthquakes are occurring now, and where we'd seen the volcano pop up, um, creating new lands to the, to the east of uh, Tonga. This also, unfortunately, um, this pattern of earthquakes that we've seen, this is, this is where things start getting complex, and, I'm, and I might lose the thread, so bring me back to it if we, if we divert too much. But, okay. But the, the earthquakes we've seen 
we had forecasted in the past we'd said oh big earthquake coming everybody watch out and everybody in china or you know we'd get it within a few days it would be reasonably accurate and then but this past series of runs we just decided it was there was no point because there was just going to be so many large earthquakes there was no point in saying on this day there's going to be a big earthquake and then later on in the day there will be another one and then two the next day and and so on because there are just going to be so many of them and it's going to escalate over the course of these next few years to the point where it becomes pretty much uh daily events for us all as part and parcel of whatever is the larger amount of or whatever's causing the larger earth changes in general now the larger earthquakes that we've seen now uh, fit the time pattern that we'd forecast in the sense that we said, okay, from about midsummer on, the summer was going to go to hell, and we would have all these different things occur, including the shift into these large, into a pattern of large earthquakes that will uh, peak probably in uh, late November of 2011, and then for a while, and just sort of go quiet for a bit. Now, whatever the cause is, it, to a certain extent, leaving that out, uh, we there's some deductions that we can make as a result of how these earthquakes are appearing and where they're appearing. And the, the deductions are that new land is indeed arising, that we may see very substantial cracking in underlying tectonic plates, especially in the thin parts of those plates, which are within the ocean bottoms. This may go to the, uh, you know, as element C here is a deduction, it may go to actually support the idea of... Um, plasma expansion uh, uh, as a subset of the electric universe model, which basically means that our Earth is expanding as new material, new matter is actually created in the middle of it, and, and thus like a, um, uh, um, you know, an insect that has to sort of shed its skin or, uh, or crack, crack loose, we have that kind of an effect occurring here. Other, other deductions we can make are that these earthquakes are appearing in a pattern that is associated with what are known as the cordia or, or ridges that form around the continents in this hyper-dimensional arrangement, which, getting back to our friend in Holland, suggests that, you know, uh, you should be prepared for some significant level of flooding over the next few years that may actually end up denying or, or recovering all of the land that has been taken from the ocean over these past uh, centuries. The reason that, that I su suggest this is because it, it may be that we get cracks up here in the plates and that those cracks are there because we're going to have new land masses arise which are going to present a further pressure on the ocean causing ocean levels to rise from a very unexpected source. Sort of makes sense? Uh, it makes total sense. Okay, now the, the hidden part of all of this is that the pattern in which the earthquakes are appearing... Uh, as they are in the New Hebrides area um, around Australia, um, is also a, an indicator that it's dealing with the rotation of the planet. Because you have to sort of imagine that there's a, these large collection of rocks that are sort of floating together in space, and we call them home or Earth, and that on these rocks are the continents that we scurry around on. But that the continent, that the rocks themselves, the giant tectonic plates, really are basically floating around, they're not all that solid, and that they want to move relative to each other based on all kinds of influences from gravity, pressure, you know, magnetism, and all this sort of a deal. And it appears as though the Australian plate is attempting to separate itself from the, the edge uh, where it connects to the Pacific plate. We can look at it one, two, two ways. We can buy into the subduction theory that, that the Australian plate's trying to dive under the Pacific because the Pacific is larger, in spite of the fact of relative height differentials and all these other things. That I just don't buy subduction for a number of different reasons. But it, it actually does appear, though, that what's going on here is an indicator that there is um, larger issues that are going to be evolving on the planet relative to the rotation. Because if you get a globe and you start looking at where the earthquakes are appearing in the impacts we're seeing with, for instance, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, the recent volcano activity in the Caribbean, uh, the volcano activity around the Ring of Fire in the...